If you're feeling overwhelmed by Notion, you're not alone. Most people quit because they just try to do too much too fast without the right setup. And that's exactly why I made this video. I've helped thousands of people simplify their Notion workflow, and here's what I've learned. It's not that Notion is too complicated, it's just that most people start the wrong way. When you get this right, Notion stops feeling like a blank page and starts feeling like your second brain. Here's what we're going to go through in this video. A smarter way to get started without building from scratch, as that is extremely overwhelming. A beginner's guide to Notion databases. The most important Notion feature that you need to understand. And how Notion page structures work, as it is very different to other softwares. Subscribe for Notion tutorials, let's dive in. So the first thing I recommend you do is download a free template like basic os this is linked in the description i also have a premium template called headquarters but if you are completely new to notion then i recommend something a lot more simple like basic os but there's a ton of great ones out there and when you click on the link then up here at the top you can see this button here if you click that you will duplicate it to your notion account and then you can edit add tasks and do whatever you want with the template. So I'll just walk through how this works and then we can also get an understanding of a few of these different elements here in Notion. So this time blocking section up here, this task section here, which is a calendar and this task list here, these are all actually the same database. So this database, this one, and this one are all the same database. And these different tabs here are also, again, the same database. Now, the reason we do that here in Notion is that we can look at the same data collection in different ways. So this is kind of a new way of thinking, but if you were to take like a normal to-do list like this, task one, task two, task three, this here isn't connected to anything. It's not speaking to anything. So what Notion allows you to do is to take these tasks and instead make them into pages, pages that sit inside of a database. So here you can see task one now, and you can open that up and that's an entire page here. But setting up these different tabs here, setting up a calendar, setting this up, it can be a bit confusing if you're completely new to Notion and especially difficult if you're not used to thinking about systems. I spent months making my premium Notion template. Basic OS here only took me a few minutes to make, but that's because I'm an absolute nerd with Notion now. So a smarter way to go about learning Notion is to just download a free template and then start playing around. So I'll show you how Basic OS works by first going through databases, then going through our commands, and then going through page structures. So this here is our database. And in Notion, if you click on these three dots here, you can see layout here. This database here can be displayed to us in a table, a board, a timeline, a calendar, a chart, a gallery, or a list. So right now we're seeing it as a table and it looks like this, but we could see it as a calendar or we could do a board view and now see it like this. So with layouts, we see the same information in different views. Now these different columns here are referred to as properties in Notion. So if I click on this plus here, I can actually add new properties. And Notion has a ton of properties in the databases here. And with Notion AI, it even actually comes up with ideas for you. The most common ones you'll probably work with are text, number, select, the date property, and possibly formulas and relations, but they're a bit more advanced. So we have layouts, which can change the way we see the information. We have properties here, which allow us to add and connect information. And we have three main last features here, filter, sort, and lastly, group. There's also stuff like automations, that's more advanced, and you would need Notion Plus to use that. So under the All Tasks tab here, we're not using any of those features. However, if we click on Uncompleted, as you can see, this filter is now blue. That's because I've actually set up a filter here on Uncompleted. And when you download any Notion template, all of these filters get included. So under this tab here, we have the filter, Show Me the Checkbox is Unchecked. So if any of these here are unchecked, they'll show up. However, if I check this in, now it gets removed here. Now we are using a filter here. So the task still exists. As you can see, task three is sitting here under all tasks and it's been checked in. But because of this filter here, it's not showing up under this tab. Now we can use filters here for anything, not just checkboxes. So on the unscheduled here, I have a filter which says, show me the unchecked and where the date is empty. So that's for unscheduled, because if I say task two here, and say I want to do that today, then I no longer see that task here on unscheduled because it's been scheduled. And you can even see that task sitting here on our monthly view. So that's how filters work. Let's have a look at groups. So what I'll do here is right click on all tasks and do duplicate. 
So I'm not duplicating the tasks, I'm duplicating the view here. And I'll call this tab here by date. And let's say task one here is on April 4th, and let's say task three here is on the 5th. What I can do here is click on the three dots and use the group. And what I'll do is group this by date. Now, as you can see under the by date, we have these two toggles here, the ones where the tasks are scheduled for today and the one for tomorrow. And they are sitting here under these toggles. So that's how groups work in Notion databases. Let's say under all tasks here, I want to see all of the tasks I've completed at the top of this list without having to manually drag it every single time. Well, there's a way we can easily do that. And that's by using this last feature here called sort. So if I click on sort here, we can say, how do I want to sort this information? And I'm going to sort this by the checkbox. And right now the checkbox is ascending. So let's change it to descending. So now we are sorting this list here by whatever's been checked in. So if I tick in task two here, as you can see, it jumps up to the top here and task one jumps down to the bottom. So now that you have a free template like basic OS and you've understood database properties, you've understood database layouts, you've understood filters, you've understood sorting, and you've understood groups, the next thing to look at is commands. So in Notion, as you can see, as I press down, these are all here separate lines. And lines in Notion don't just have to be text, like a Word document would work. Instead, we could use forward slash, and this will bring up all of our different commands. So we have the basic blocks, such as text, heading one, two, and three. So this here is very much like a normal Word document. We also have formatting like bulleted lists, the number lists, a to-do list, and a toggle list. These are all quite useful. Then we have all of these different database options that we looked at before. And for a Notion nerd like me, I end up using these databases the most. We also have advanced blocks, which we won't get to in this video, but I quickly wanted to mention embeds here. So you can actually embed from a bunch of different apps. I don't even know half of these apps, to be honest. And it can be really powerful to embed other information from other apps directly into Notion. So all of these lines here don't just have to be text, they have the ability to be absolutely anything you want from this list of commands. Speaking of, now that we understand the command feature, let's understand how Notion page structures work. See, on a computer, your folder will have documents in it, but you can't go from one document to the next. They're all separate documents. In Notion, a folder is the same thing as a page. So like I showed before, if we do forward slash, then here we can see this option called page. And this now opens up a new page, AKA a new folder. So if I call this task list, for example, I now have that page sitting here on my basic OS page. And you can have pages and pages and pages. And the reason I wanted to show you databases before pages is because we can now lift this information directly into this page. So this database here is called tasks. But because I've made a million tutorials, I'll call this tasks 99, just so I can quickly find it. What I'll do here is write forward slash and write database, as we were looking at before. And now I'll click on table view. And here you can see we can create a new database or link to an existing one. I can now search for tasks 99 and now show this information on this page here. So this information here, if I add a new one called task 99, if I go back to basic OS and scroll down, you can see task 99 sitting here. In Notion, everything can be connected. Now, if you found this useful, then check out this video here as well, where I dive a bit more into this stuff, but hopefully now you find Notion less confusing.